What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, you guys? We are back for another episode of Our Kind of People, okay? This episode was good, baby. This Listen, y'all got to keep this up. Y'all got to keep this up. And I really hope that this show get renewed because, baby, y'all bringing it, okay? It's like the right amount of drama, okay? Right amount of drama, and I'm loving it. Um, So, this episode is called... Well, it's season one, episode three, Hot Links and Red Drinks, okay? Baby, we are celebrating Juneteenth, okay? We got our, our holiday is up in the forefront, okay, on national TV. That's how it's supposed to be, boo-boo, all right? But, you know, Angela, she is having a dream, okay? Because all of a sudden, we see Angela. She had looked like this little black party or this little party or whatever for Juneteenth. Uh, and I noticed that when I saw the colors. As soon as I seen the colors, I said, this Juneteenth, bitch. She come down there dancing and stuff like that. And then she was like, oh, my God. Mama, that's you. And she was like, I'm here, baby. What's going on? She was like, oh, my God, Mama. I miss you so much. She was like, girl, I'm not going nowhere. She was like, is this really you? If it wasn't me, could I do this? They started dancing with each other and everything. And at this point, you know, we already know that she having a dream. And uh, all of a sudden, she gets separated by the crowd. Mind you, I was sitting here like, you know, Angie, you could have uh, walked over there to her, okay? That crowd wasn't that dense to get to her, okay? Mama, mom, I said, girl, go around. Go around or park, you know? It was just a couple of people ahead of you. Okay, that's all that it was. But anyway, she wakes up from the dream. You know, it was a nightmare to her. She was like, oh my God, I need to know, find out what Teddy did to you and all this stuff. She looking at her mama picture and she throws the picture and it lands on another counter, whatever, uh, desk or something. And breaks. And I was like, um, ma'am, mama didn't do nothing. Teddy did it. So why you throw her picture like that? And you better be glad it was just the glass that broke and it wasn't the actual picture, girl. I said, stop that. So meanwhile, um, baby, Angela comes downstairs and she see Nikki and, you know, they got the house decorated for Juneteenth or whatever. Auntie sitting at the uh, uh, on the couch looking at them because Angela started dancing with Nikki. And at this point, um... <clears throat> At this point, you know, we still have to remember that at the end of last week's episode, Daddy, uh, Daddy Pope, aka Teddy Franklin, he popped up in the house on uh, uh, Auntie. Okay, and at this point, I'm sitting here like, what's what's going on? So we're not gonna start it off with what happened. Y'all just gonna keep us trying to wait. Okay, cool. That's what we gonna do. That's what we gonna do. Meanwhile. Angela sat her ass down there and she took the red nail polish and was painting the bottom of them red bottoms. I said, bitch, now was they already red bottoms or was you did you already have them painted to make it look like they was red bottoms and you was just doing a little bit of repair? I said, you know, you got to fake it till you make it, okay? And I ain't even mad at her. But basically, you know, they usually have some Juneteenth celebrations. Uh, the mom is very much into it, Evelyn, uh, Angela's mom. And, you know, she said a saying uh, that the mama always do or whatever. But if you notice... When she was talking about basically getting back into that, um, you know, incubator program, um, <clears throat> the auntie's face changed. And I said, oh, excuse me, what's going on, Miss Auntie? You know, she was saying something. And from that look on the auntie's face, I'm sitting here like from when Teddy popped up last week and from that look on her face that was like, oh, shit. I'm sitting here like, auntie, it's some stuff that you ain't telling. Okay, Angela out here running ragged, trying to um get in good with these people, not necessarily get in good with them, but just get up into this program to prove whatever point she's trying to prove. Because at this point, I really don't know what she's trying to prove, especially after this episode. Like, what is her end game now? Okay, because it's not money. And. And, you know, she said she wanted to get into this incubator program, but what is else after that? Because all the secrets came out in this episode and we only in episode three. Okay. They didn't drag it out, which I appreciate. Okay. Now let's hit the problem. Let's see what other chaos is going to happen in the rest of the season. I appreciate that. But, um, miss, uh, auntie is holding back some stuff that she ain't telling Angela. And I'm like, girl, what secrets do you have? Okay. You see this girl struggling and you not putting it out there. Meanwhile, um, Angela trying to get probably, uh, you know, was thinking about going to, um, Nadine's, what's her name? Not Nadine. That's the character. That's the actress name. Uh, Leah's party. Okay. It, it's a party on the green, black and, 
uh, Red Party on the Green, okay, for Juneteenth. And, you know, trying to see if she was going to go to that. But she said basically, no, she was going to go somewhere else and all this stuff. Uh, of course, you got... Um, uh, Lauren, she finally get out of jail. The daddy done bailed her out or whatever. And, you know, she trying to see what's going on. The dad put her with the mama. And the mama is just basically all about imagery, okay? You know, she didn't want to go to this party on the green thing because... She just didn't want to go. And she was like, why do I need to go? And the dad said, you know, this is your Nana Rose, her event that she always put on. And she was like, Nana Rose ain't even going to be there. So why do I need to be there? And she was really close. I just broke my fucking nail. I'm sorry. That just threw me off. She close to Nana Rose. At least, you know, we, we see a common thread between the cousins, okay? And the, the girl cousins, especially. Nikki is really close, and as she said throughout this episode, that her grandmother was her best friend. Um, Lauren, she was cool with the grandma too, okay? So, that's that. And, you know, Leah, she's all about this appearance, and, um, you know, we got to come together and uh, show a united front and all this stuff. And I'm just like, girl, the girl just got out of jail. Can you just give her some time or whatever? Uh, You know, and the... Quincy had to come in there and take her away just to break up the monotony and the inquisition that was going on with Leah and, um, what's the girl name? Lauren. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, Raymond, that's his name. I got to get these names together. Raymond is basically talking about how he trying to get his company back. Okay. That's what he want. He want his company back. Did y'all see at one point in the episode, Jack had called, uh, uh, Leah, I said, you got your nerves to be trying to call or whatever. Meanwhile, you got Tariq, he up in um uh Angie's place and he putting installing cameras and all this stuff, making it seem like he doing security or whatever. I said, you being real helpful for somebody that you ain't known that long. You really trying to get into them things, okay? You trying to get into the pants. I mean, that's if you haven't already got them, okay? Because the way y'all acting, y'all coupled up, coupled up, okay? You know, she, she invited him to a party or vice versa, a place to go kick it at or whatever. She trying to get ready for the incubator program um, presentation to the board members. And at this point, Raymond had already told Leah that uh, she was supposed to be there. And so, of course, Leah, she's going to be a bitch. Because we get to the program, uh, the presentation for the program, and... Angela is being her charming self, okay? She's talking about uh, Eden's Grove. Is it Eden, Eden's Cove, okay? The hair products and everything. Leah is having an issue with the fact that the bottom imagery, because it's a woman with an afro. It's natural hair care products. So, therefore, let's put somebody with an afro on it that has natural hair, all right? It's her mother's figure it's her mother's image okay and angie is telling us the history about it leah is like girl well if you want to keep this up in the um this ghetto fad uh swap meet shit you can go ahead and do that she was like oh well to be quite honest because she said if you change your logo and your labeling it'll get you further and truth be told, that is a marketing tactic, you know, and we've seen that type of marketing tactic go on in many different industries for in this type of industry, product industry, and, and especially the music industry. We saw that back in the day, you know, when those doo-wop groups was out there and they was trying to, when things was like segregated and shit like that, they wouldn't put the black artist face on some of these uh, albums. They'll put something else on there, like a, a sunset. Y'all saw the five heartbeats. Y'all know what it is, okay? And the temptations and shit, okay? Just so that shit can sell. That shit really did happen and i said leah what you trying to do bitch and you had to tell her listen you talking about the swap meets and shit like that that's a multi-billion dollar industry okay and it's a whole bunch of them around the world so therefore i keep my image since you up here talking about the ghetto and what it is you know she had to give her the definition and break that shit down and all that stuff and i said boop on your face leah you do too much she was just uh you know just real nasty i don't even like her i don't like her like I want to like Leah because I understand. I understand that you and your feelings because you don't know where this girl comes from. You feel like she's uh, trying to make her way in for some reason. And then you find out 
part of the reason is the fact that she's your sister and you didn't even know about it. And so, of course, that making you dislike her a little bit more. But truth be told, I think Leah actually does like Angie. If you put all this shit aside, they're damn near the same. They're damn near the same and they just was born in different places. Or I should say they were raised in different places. That's it. She's so much about this class shit and thinking she's so better and privileged compared to Angie because she keeps on calling her ghetto, keeps calling her Project Hood and all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh my God, you just, when she said that shit at the end of the episode, talk about some that hood saying that her mama said, grab him by the horns instead of the butt. I said, you know what? Leah, you gonna get one more time, okay? One more time, all right? You so glad that bitch ain't ghetto like you said because a ghetto-ass, hood-ass bitch would have been popped your ass, okay? I'm just saying. Meanwhile, you know, um, Angie took her... She was coming out. Leah was on the phone and Leah was like, I hope you don't um think that I was coming down too hard on you or whatever, because that's what I do with all my candidates or whatever, trying to get into the program. And um, she was like, I mean, you don't know me, right? So why would I think that you had anything against me and you was coming down hard on me or whatever? Next thing you know, Angie started singing a, a Negro spiritual, right? Like a, a, a gospel hymn or something like that. But I think it was more so a Negro spiritual. And as she walking away, her voice is elevating because mama is scratching up Leah's car at the same time. So Leah can't hear the scratches. I said, bitch, <laughs> funny to me. Okay. Meanwhile, after that, I guess whatever Leah said to her about the packaging kind of went. And it got to a little bit to the point that Angie got on live. Okay. And she was asking her audience about it. And apparently... Eden's Cove has been doing well for a while, okay? Because she has a big following. And, you know, this product has been out there. She's asking her people, you know, and I love it when somebody is promoting a product in a business or whatever, and they know their target audiences, and they're not acting as if, oh, you're just a number to me. You're just somebody that's trying to, a dollar sign to me. You actually, they actually make it personable, like I'm personable to you, you know? And that's how she was coming to her audience and, you know, asking them, what's their opinion? Should we keep the image? Should we change it or whatever? And Miss Leah is sitting there looking. And I said, bitch, so you up on her live, unless you on a fake account, she you do know that on Instagram it shows you when a person uh pops up in your live or whatever. It I okay, okay, so and so has entered your live. You know, it says that. Okay, I said, hmm, Leah, that's gonna come back. Meanwhile, Raymond goes over there to see Teddy and basically was like, um, I want my company back. OK, because apparently whatever was going on with his company, he needed some money to get a bailout. And I guess he accepted this big uh bailout. And he was like, I paid the bailout money. I'm paying that and I'm on track to have it paid before the year is out or whatever. So you can give me my, uh, my company back. Teddy said no. OK, Teddy said, um, no, that's not what's going to happen. And I was just like, <sighs> I can already see the tension and the mess that's about to happen between Teddy and Raymond at this point. Meanwhile, you know, um, Leah goes over there to meet her mama, okay? And when she goes to the nursing home to see her mom, her mom is, it looked like she's just sedated at this point. The last time we saw her, you know, she was talking to Angie, thinking that Angie was Leah and all this stuff, and she was spilling all the tea. So Leah is just sitting there, and, you know, she's trying to tell her about the, uh, you know, the party on the green, uh, um, you know, party that they j about to put on. And this was your party. You used to love doing this. And I remember getting dressed and all this stuff. And then we see a flashback, you know, part of the party on the green is rose. Okay. There's rose you know, signifies, I guess, the blood of the ancestors and where we came from, the, the thorns and all this stuff being taken off, where we came from, where we going, the progress and all this stuff, whatever. Everything has a symbol. Everything is symbolic, okay? And so in this flashback, we see a young Leah and she's talking to her mom, seeing if she's ready for the party. But the mom is, you can tell she's, at this point, she been going through some type of episodes, okay? Okay. I don't know if she's a manic depressant. I don't know if she's bipolar. I don't know if she's schizophrenic or anything else, but she's one of those, okay? Because she was going through an episode and she was just talking about how the roses aren't right, the, this ain't right, and you look around the room, it's so many rose petals just sprinkled on the room, like she just went, you know, picking at them and all this stuff. And at this point, 
Daddy Teddy had to come up in there and they had a doctor come up in there and sedate her because she was about to go a little crazy. And um, you know, Daddy Teddy Teddy gonna tell Leah basically, don't say nothing about this because, you know, we don't want this to get out and weak ain't being weak ain't power and some shit like that. I said there's so much so much about having power and control. And I don't like the fact that that's what it is, okay? There is no love. I don't see the love between him and his daughter. Like, why are you having kids just to continue on the legacy? Because you treat them like they're people that you are a product, okay? Or or, or somebody that you're in business with instead of uh, uh, um, somebody that you care about, somebody that you love so much. And I just don't like that. I said, mm, all this power talking, this control or whatever. Meanwhile, um, Leah comes over there to... Uh, Angie's place, okay? And, of course, Angie had to call her out. Listen, bitch, I knew you was up in my lab or whatever. And she was like, girl, what? She was like, yeah, I saw you. I said, I knew it. I knew it. But, see, at this point, remember Daddy Teddy had told Leah, you got to fix this problem and get rid of Angie before she put all our shit out there, okay? Before some secrets or whatever else get un un unfolded. And I said, bitch, what other secrets is there? This the biggest secret that you got a uh, love child. That's what it is. And Leah comes over there like, bitch, you're not going to get in the incubator program. And I do know you, you claim that you are, um, sister or whatever, but that ain't what it is. And she was like, yes, it is. I took some DNA and she said, bitch, where'd you get the DNA from? And she said, don't worry about that. But just know that I'm your sister, Teddy, my daddy. And it is what it is. What now? Okay. She was like, listen, you trying to get up in this program or whatever. It ain't going to happen right about now. Okay. Um, you know, you trying to get on the forefront and all this stuff, but what will people think about your credit card debt that you got on the four credit cards that you need? That, uh, you know, you're on the bubble with this business loan that you got. You got all this other stuff that's out here. And if I can give you the money to pay this over and then some, would you leave? Okay. And, um, uh, Miss Angie said, listen, bitch, I cannot be bought nor sold. And that's not what it is. I don't want your motherfucking money because that's not what's happening here. And I said, well, damn, Angie, could you please tell me what the end game is? Because I'm, I'm, I'm concerned and I'm curious. All right. Next thing you know. Uh, Angie didn't cut herself with the knife that she had, not the knife, the uh, cutting shears that she had in her hand, some scissors, because she was doing a wig or whatever before um, Leah came. And then she had put her blood on the, um, the, the, the check. Instead of ripping it up, she put her blood on the check and she gave it back to Leah and she said, here, take this bitch, take this and go run a DNA test if you don't believe me. <laughs> I said, girl, we are dramatic. <laughs> Bitch, just pull, pluck your hair or something. We ain't have to cut it. I said, what is going on? This is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> but uh, Leah was like, girl, you crazy. I'm going to go up out of here. I said, please do. Because ain't nobody asked you to come. All right. Meanwhile, we get to a next day. And I'm thinking that this is a dream montage. But it's really not. Angie went up there to see Teddy. Okay. And I said, oh, shit. What's this? What's going on? I said, you know, he getting his little facial or whatever. And I said, um, is this a dream montage? Apparently it wasn't. And she confronted him and was like, you ain't do nothing for me. And I'm here. You sent Leah here to uh, uh make me go away and all this stuff. He said, listen, I didn't know nothing about that. I did not send Leah. And I wasn't expecting this from him because everything that we got, you know, he's always giving these deep monologues, okay, that 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 exudes some type of power of structure. You know what I'm saying? Of, hmm, let me hold my head up high type of thing. You know what I'm saying? As, as a way to put people down and put people in their place. We saw that when he was talking to Raymond earlier in this episode to basically tell him, no, I'm not giving you back your company. And then we saw it when he was talking to Leah, okay? And then you told her, get rid of this girl. But then when you are confronted because you caught off guard, you're so soft. And listen, holding her hand, listen, my, your mother, she meant more to me than you think, okay? She wasn't just a nobody. You don't understand. And I wasn't trying to stay out your life. I wasn't this and I wasn't that. And I'm sitting here like, that's why I thought it was a dream that she was having too. Because, you know, you started the episode off with a dream. I'm thinking this, this is another one. And it didn't make sense to me that he was so, you know, calm and, 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 and almost like 
you know, wanted a little bit of sympathy and empathy from her. Like, understand me. Like, I did want you, but some things got into the way. That's what he was coming off as. And Angela was like, you know, fuck this. I don't want nothing from you. You can continue to do what you did for the rest of my life. Um, to my life prior, which is nothing. Okay. Mind you, you noticed that he was shaking. And if you notice on the last week's episode, um, when he was talking to Leah, when Leah came into his office, I think it was either the first episode or last week's episode. Um, when she hit that chest board, his hand was shaking too. And I said, Oh, you got Parkinson's or something. That's what I immediately thought. Okay. Meanwhile, when that scene is over with, we get to the beach. Okay, I said, oh, what is this? And then we see our girl, Nikki. I said, Nikki, wait a minute. I thought you were still in the hospital. Girl, Nikki is at the hospital. She partying up on the beach. Not Nikki, but Taylor. Taylor is at the hospital. She partying it up on the beach or whatever with uh, Taylor. And uh, I mean, Nikki. And I'm just sitting here like, so y'all cool, cool like that. So what is this? You know what I'm saying? Is it just friends or whatever? And next thing you know, they're talking and Taylor was like, these girls or whatever, ain't none of them barely texting me or came to see how I was in the hospital. So I don't even know why I'm kicking it with them or whatever. Okay. But then while they're talking, Nikki overhears these three girls up here uh, playing this game, talking about field house or uh, out, uh, field or in the house. You know what I'm saying? Talking about black folks. You know what I'm saying? And of course, that strikes a nerve with Nikki. And I didn't quite understand why she had to do something about it, even though it's messed up because it's very much colorism. And I'm so glad that they threw that in there and they had Nikki get his whole speech about why you doing this stuff. This is why we got this shit going on. This is colorism and shit like that. They get into it. The girl got disrespectful with Nikki. Nikki wound up about to bust that bitch in the face. Mind you, she had to stop herself because earlier somebody, she was trending on Twitter, I guess, or she was getting a whole bunch of, um, you know, messages on Twitter that, was saying that she was needed to be canceled and you don't supposed to fight or whatever because the fight that she got into that the year prior that got her kicked out of school it got put on the internet and she was beating the shit out of this bitch i said whatever that girl did she deserved it and i said oh we get canceled just for fighting and defending ourselves oh i didn't know that but okay and then she a teen i didn't know that meanwhile um, her and Nikki had a, uh, Nikki and Taylor had a conversation afterwards and, you know, um, that's when it's revealed that Nikki knows about Taylor and Lauren's relationship and that she loves her and that she, you know, cares so much about her and, um, Nikki tells her about her grandmother and how her grandmother was her best friend. But we also see that Nikki was telling Taylor, you need to go ahead and come clean and fix that situation about saying that, um, you know, Lauren was the one that pushed her over the edge. And she was like, I know because I can't tell you what happened. I'm pretty sure it's just because I was drunk, but I don't know how I fell in, but I know Lauren didn't do it. But, um, all I know is I remember waking up in the hospital and I said, so what was it? She was just getting back at the bitch. Okay. She was in her little fields, you know, lesbians, we emotional. Okay. We little emotionals or whatever. I guess she was tired of being a little secret, you know? And so, um, they're connecting and they're becoming cool. We see Tariq and Angela, they coming cool again too. And I'm just like, um, hmm. Okay. We're going to let that slide for a second. Meanwhile, while they was at that beach, Taylor had gave Nikki a vape. And I said, baby, I thought you got expelled from, uh, we, you had an issue with weed and shit like that. So what we doing? I said, say no girl. Say no. She said, yes. And I said, oh, okay. We're going to see how this unfold. Meanwhile, we got auntie up in the car with a map, okay? She looking like, what's up? What's up? And she looking for this place and all this stuff, and it's dark. Next thing you know, some dude come on the window like this. Do, 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 do. And I said, oh, who is you? Okay, auntie was like, what? Next thing you know, somebody opened up the door and got in, and it was Teddy. I said, excuse the fuck out of me. Now, ma'am, we black. We lock all doors, okay? And we is in a dark place. And we don't know where it's at. Girl, why your door is locked? That man just set his ass down. He said, listen, I thought I told you what it was, okay? And I thought I told you not to come to this place. And she was like, listen, I'm looking for the place where Darius' body is at. And I said, who the hell is Darius, okay? Because when Darius died, you mean when you killed him? I said, um, excuse me? <laughs> You're not just going to slide that in there right there, okay? And I was like, um, excuse me? Until you kill somebody? That's what Teddy got on you? 
I guess Darius was Teddy's friend or some shit. Like, that's how they all connected. I said, um, excuse the hell out of me. What is happening right here, right now? And he said, I thought I told you. I thought we made a deal or whatever to get um, Angela up out of here, okay? Because um, I don't need her starting no chaos and no trouble or whatever. And she said... She just as strong-willed as her mama, and she ain't finna leave for nothing, okay? You gonna have to uh do something about this, all right? That's gonna be on you. He said, okay, bitch, you called my bluff. I called your bluff, but uh, you gonna see what's up. I said, what is with all the threats? What is happening? Meanwhile, I said, auntie, who was Darius? And what you do to kill him? What happened? Did you really take him out? Angie's sitting up in the house in um Nikki's room when she get up there and um Nikki has hair. She was like, where the hell you been at? Okay, is you hot, bitch? That's what's going on with you? And I said, oh, no. She said, give me your phone. Give me your phone, okay? So she took her phone. She said, bitch, I'm taking your social media off your phone for a week. I said, so... Now, how's that happening? She did say she was going to put a tracker on her shit. And, um... I said, so she can just re-download it unless the tracker shows you what apps or whatever she putting on there. I'm confused. Maybe because I ain't got kids, so I don't be doing that or I don't be tracking people like that. So, hmm. Meanwhile, um, you know, Nikki is basically acting out at this point and it's because she missed family. She missed home. And at one point they had a little conversation where, you know, they... She had revealed to her, listen, I miss my grandma. My grandma was my friend, okay? She was the one I used to sit down and actually talk to. I couldn't talk to you like that, all right? And the girl was, what happened at the beach was I got into a fight because the girl was talking about field niggas and um, house niggas. That's what she was talking about, some colorism shit. Meanwhile, my um, fight from when I was in school is trending on freaking Twitter because, um, and they, she was like, don't play it. But old girl went on ahead and played it. Of course, Angie got to see what it is. She went on ahead and played it and realized that um it was a day that her mother went up there to the school or whatever with um Nikki and somebody was talking about her looks, uh her skin color and calling her a skillet or whatever. And so therefore, that's why Nikki beat the bitch ass. And I said, I don't see the problem in that. She did what needed to be done. And Angie was just, you know, in her feelings and talking to her auntie like, damn, this whole time I didn't realize that my daughter was acting out because she was hurting. That's what's going on. She was hurting. Okay. She needs to make this better, you know, and she gets this bright idea as well after the auntie just calmed her down and, you know, reasoned with her. She was like, listen, I'm finna get up into this incubator program. And I know the exact person that can get me in there too. Teddy, he asked me what I wanted. Bitch, this is what I want. Um, she was like, I'm gonna sneak up in that bitch. And I said, how the hell did they sneak up in there without no invitation? She was able to sneak up in there and have a conversation with Teddy and basically was like, listen, so I want to get up in the program. And he was like, you know, to be quite honest, that's cool. You do got that Franklin spirit, but um, that's Leah shit. And I can't even override that myself. And she was like, all right, but uh, you're going to put me up in there some way, somehow. Next thing you know... While they was talking, Quincy, the uh, grandson, Leah's son, comes out there to try to see uh, where granddaddy was because Nana Rose showed up. Who brought Nana Rose? Lauren. Okay. She brought Nana Rose to basically call some shit. Nana Rose wound up having an episode showing her ass because she don't know what's going on. She's talking about these colors is messed up and this is messed up and she's trying to fix stuff. And then Angela came over there. She was talking to her, calling her Leah and all this stuff as if that was her kid. And Leah was like, no, mama, it's me. It's me. Okay. What are you talking about? She's like, no, you're not my daughter. And I said, oops. <laughs> I said, bitch, for a second, I was like, was they switched? Was they switched at birth and she really knows who her daughter is? But no, she was really having an episode, okay? And at this point, Leah got fed up. She got fed up in her feelings and she said, no, bitch, that ain't Leah. Leah, no, this bitch right here is um, Evelyn's daughter, the bastard that my daddy had an affair with, okay? Had an affair on and, and, and this his bastard, okay? This who it is. And she was like, why is she here? Why is she here then? And um, Leah confronted her. I was like, yeah, bitch, why you here? And I said, uh-oh, we're going to do this in front of the whole party? Yes, we're going to do this in front of the whole party. Meanwhile, they go to the back and she's going to say something. Oh, the gossip people is already circulating on gossip sites and stuff like that. And um, <laughs> going to try to blame the daddy. 
This is your fault. He said, hold up. None of this is my fault. This is your fault. He said, no. She was like, Leah said, no, this is your fault because you couldn't keep your penis in your marriage. Okay. And at this point, <laughs> he said, no, bitch, it's your fault because you couldn't keep your emotions intact. Okay. You the one that blew the whole secret up. And I said, you know what? Because at first I said, technically speaking, Teddy, this is all of your fault. Okay. This, this started because you couldn't keep your dick in your pants. Okay. That's what it is. But at the same time, they're both correct because he's correct about what she did. She couldn't keep her emotions intact and she blew up the spot. So now they got to fix this shit. And basically what's going to happen is Angela said, you know, why don't we just get ahead of the news by presenting a um, united front like we all good and that'll get people to make the tea seem like it's stale cold tea. And they was like, okay, cool. So they get up there and basically announce that, yeah, my daddy had an affair and this is my sister and we welcome her with open arms. And everybody was like, mm, oh, okay. I said, like, you just didn't hear that. You just heard her say what it was, and now y'all gasping like, oh, my God. <laughs> you just heard it, okay? But, you know, at this point, Angela took it upon herself to say, yeah, she give a speech. And Leah, now they was looking like, girl, what you doing? She was like, um, excuse me. So, I'm, they welcome me with open arms, okay? And just like that, they're also going to welcome me into the incubator program. I said, bitch, I know that's the fuck right. <laughs> She said, you going to get me up in that bitch one way or another. All right. Meanwhile, um, Tariq is having a conversation with uh, Teddy in his office. Come to find out, Teddy set this whole thing up. The relationship with Angela and them cameras in her house so he can watch her and watch what's going on in that goddamn house. I said, what the fuck mind you he was talking about something with the help or whatever and um Tariq said wait a minute what you talking about because I come from the help my daddy was the help okay and he was like no 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 no. I'm not I'm sorry I'm not talking about you you know do you want to come over and you want to do this and do you want to um uh uh be the first dib on doing this skybox or whatever you know at the new stadium that they trying to build or whatever that they showed in the first episode mind you he had took Angela on a date and had showed her some stuff of what he had in mind of how he wanted to uh build up the skybox and shit like that. Meanwhile, I said, oh, okay, so y'all y'all just playing games right now. You been knew when she first came to town who she was and that to the point that you had him set this whole thing up. I ain't like that. I ain't like that. Tyreek, y'all was a cute little couple. And I feel like he really do got um uh, feelings for Angela because he was like, I don't think she really want anything. Okay. And I said, you you a little naive. You a little naive. She do. But we just don't know what it is yet. Um, and meanwhile, the daddy get a, com uh, a phone call that basically confirms that he does have Parkinson. Meanwhile, um, Lauren has this little come uh, mommy daughter conversation with her mama because earlier she overheard uh, Leah, uh, Lauren, and um, Quincy talking about how come the mama can't just accept her for who she is. And, you know, she was just basically saying how, you know, she's so tired of trying to be what you want her to be and it's stressing her out. Like she's not perfect. And she was like, you know, um, I'm sorry for that because she was grown up in a house that wasn't shown love. Love wasn't the thing. You know, you had to show a perfect image to the world. And she's sorry that she's putting that on her like that. And she was like, well, mama, bitch, can you accept me for who I am? She was like, yeah, girl. I said, oh, okay. Meanwhile, um, Angela, she had a little talk with Nikki. And she said, listen, we're going to put you as the face of the bottles of her, uh, her um, <clears throat> product, right? And she was like, oh, my God, for real? Mind you, I forgot this. Leah knew that um Angie had went to see her mama because when she was seeing her mama, she saw her bottle, one of her product bottles, okay? I said, oh, okay. You're going to leave the evidence all behind? Meanwhile, um, Nikki said something about the reason why she posts a lot on social media is so that her dad, maybe her dad could po possibly see her. Even though I know that you say that it was a one-night stand and that's how come you don't remember who it was, but, or don't know where he's at, uh, I just wanted him to see me. And so, the end of the episode, we see uh, Angie at a jail. And I said, what? Girl, this nigga come out with some locks. I said, hold up. <laughs> Who is he? And I'm trying to see if the hair is real. Because y'all know how they be doing with these wigs on these shows. I was like, is it real? 
it looked a little real. I can't tell. I'm gonna have to see better on the next week's episode. But she was, he was like, Angie, what you doing up here? I told you not to come up here. He was, she was like, it's time for her to know. I said, oh, all right. What is going on? I want to know the story, okay? He a drug dealer. What is he? He from the neighborhood. What's going on, okay? But this episode was really, really good. You guys tell me how y'all feel about it, and I will see y'all later. Peace.